Good morning, folks. This is Eric Rollins, the Constitutionalist, here on 1550 KXCX, the best talk in town. You can also find us all over social media, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, X, a little bit on Instagram, a little bit on Telegram, and all over Facebook. YouTube and Rumble. Um, not always on YouTube. Rumble. Definitely on Rumble. Rumble, Rumble. Depends on what we're talking about. Um, YouTube believes in censorship, and so we're a little careful there. Big time. Today, we're talking about education. There's a lot going on. Yes. Um, California is ruled by crazies. Yes. And so we need to be able to stand against that. And I am joined by a friend of mine who jumped in, jumped in with both feet. Dived. Belly flopped. <laughs> <laughs> I think initially, yes, belly flopped is right. But, yeah. But yeah. now you're swimming pretty good. Yes. By the well, grace of God, yes. Thank you. Welcome, Tammy McMahon Gordons. Thank you. It is so good to be here. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Because there's a big basket full of things. Well, I was here a month ago. Yep. Just about. And Almost I was exactly. I was going to go into the education room to protest against AB 1955. Okay. So we got to tell them what that is because not everybody necessarily watched the right. show. Right. It's clearly the insanity in right. California. Right. So we have a chart with all the um, laws. Um, Denise Aguilar is the author of this beautiful chart. And it's up right now, and it is featuring AB 1955, is the latest of insanity. So it shows on the right-hand side the bills that have gone through. So the people that are just on the radio, sorry, you could find us on social media because yeah. they won't be able to see the visual. Yeah, okay. So keep that in mind. You got to describe it in a way that they'll still follow. Okay, so the bills on the right, um, while we've been sleeping, and believe you me, I was sleeping for a long time, um, there's tampons in um, boys' bathrooms. And if you're 12 and you don't like your parents monitoring your life and you're rebelling and you can just run away from home and the state will house you and they'll pay for your surgery if you want to have transition surgery. And so if they're like disciplining you with, which in, traditionally when I was a teenager, I was disciplined because, you know, you get an attitude and you need guidance. Mm -hmm. Because your brain is not fully developed and all the hormones are going crazy. So there's a bill right there uh, that's set on the right hand side that they can just leave home. If you don't like that, they took away your phone. Leave home. The state will reward you. Now, all of these are California policies. Right. Yes, it's California. And yes, but as, as California goes, we affect the rest of the nation. Mm -hmm. Liberals see bad ideas and go, oh, yes, they have good intentions. I'm sure this will work. Right. And they don't let evidence get in their way. Right. And we're a sanctuary state. So anybody else that wants to run away from home because their parents are making them clean their room or whatever, or they're say they're addicted to the Internet and parents are because I, I back in the day, it was the TV for me. I'm, I'm, I have addictive tendencies and my parents monitored my hours. So if your parents are monitoring you somewhere and you want to say, Hey, California supports me, just go to California and they'll house you. So that's there, but AB 1955. So they're willing to steal kids mm -hmm. from other States, mm -hmm. st stomp on those parents' rights. Mm-hmm. So AB 1955 is a gut and amend bill. That means like they sneak it in. They're deceptive. So they have a bill that's all written and then they mm -hmm. get rid of the text of that bill mm -hmm. and insert new text. Right. It's, it's basically a slimy trick. It's a slimy trip trick by the super majority. And it comes, let me preface this bill. It comes because people were winning lawsuits in California against the state. So the state has sneakily been giving guidelines, guidelines to transition kids and keep it from parents. So it, that's essentially what this bill does. It creates a wall between parents. Yeah. Yes, because they sued Chino Hills because Chino, tell me. So that's <clears throat> Southern California. Yeah, tell me if this doesn't make sense. Chino Hills just had a policy like, if anything changes in the records, we notify parents. How crazy. Almost wow. as if parents... Parents are related to yeah. kids. Yeah, and then guess what? 
Bonta and Gavin Grusom sued them, sued them. But guess who won? Who won? Chino Hills. Chino Hills. And it was found that they have the right to notify parents. Hello, it's in the 14th Amendment. And another um, thing that happened was in Escondido, two teachers were fired because they said, I'm sorry, we cannot uh, deceive parents. It went against their values. And all the teachers I know have values of the same type. Like, I don't know any teachers that I work with that want to keep teach secrets from parents. They are not activists. Right, they right. just want to teach kids. Well, okay. The so these two teachers paid the high price, but they were really smart. They did a federal lawsuit. And guess what? They won against the state, Bonta, Gavin Grusom, and their school district. And they won. And then Shania, Jessica Tappan, Jessica, if I, if I brutalized your name, I'm so sorry. She won a lawsuit, a big lawsuit, because they fired her because she stood on principle. I'm sorry. It is against my faith and values to keep a secret from a parent. And they said, bye-bye. She sued them and won thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, Not enough, but she won. So this... It was a gut and amend bill. <clears throat> it went through both houses in California. So, yes. And then Gavin, people, he's not a good man, mm -hmm. decided that it was better to have a wall between parents. And and let's face it, mm -hmm. they say it's all about gender. Mm -hmm. But if gender can be anything you want, mm -hmm. then for any excuse, a kid can put a wall between them and their parents and the school is obligated to keep secrets. Yes. That's the problem. The school is obligated by law to keep secrets as if, well, they're not your kids. That seems to be the left's take on this. They're not your kids and we'll tell you what's best. Teachers and you better listen. Teachers just want to teach academics. We don't even want to, we, we want to teach kids to read and write. And let the parents be the parents. So I was in the education room. Chris Ward is the author of this. So this is bill. You went up to protest the passage of this bill at the Capitol in Sacramento. I went, I drove to Sacramento. I'm retired. I could be at the pool with my grandchildren eating bonbons. I drove to the cap Capitol with friends. And Chris Ward, who is the author of this bill, he gave testimony that was very deceitful, deceitful, because there was one question I want to expound upon. So the question was, Chris Ward, what would happen in the scenario that there, there was a parent teacher conference? How would you refer to the kid with the parents? And Chris Ward said, well, you would use they, them gender neutral pronouns. So in order to deceive the parents, you wouldn't say their new secret name. You would say they, them, your child, they, them is proficient in math, but below grade level in reading, they, them. And I was horrified. I videotaped him this and I was like, oh my gosh, you're putting teachers in a position to deceive and lie. And then there was an activist. This is an, another thing that people don't understand. Those of you who are in all sides of the aisle. The people that voted against this, many, many Democrats saying no. Yes, but not enough in the legislature. So there were people that spoke that were against it. But the legislature is essentially owned by the woke left in California. Absolutely. And many of them don't have children or families. And they're making decisions for families and they don't have families. And one woman who spoke against it. So... Our side, the side against this for parental rights, had two people. One was a board member. Do you remember her name? We talked about that last night. From Chino. No, it's not coming to me. Okay, incredible woman. Um, anyway, one and then one was a LGP, LGB activist from San Francisco who is a union rep who said no. So to all my teacher friends who are in the union, there's a union rep that's saying no. 
because so they, basically you're saying across the political spectrum they're saying no yeah were there other people i know that denise aguilar who of freedom angels is one of the people that led it what did she have to say well, I met Denise Aguilar, and she's running for assembly in Stockton, and Tara, and they're the leaders of Freedom Angels. And I follow them. They're the ones that made that chart that was up for people to see. So um, I met them, gave them huge hugs because I've only met them online. So it was like a great, and then it was it was so wonderful, the people that were there. So Jessica Tanaya Tapia or Shania uh, she was there, um, a gal that I'm friends with when I was in No Left Turn in Education. Um, she was there, um, and there were people from Merced that were there, people from Southern California, people that drove from San Diego that were there, and there was a, a and and people would get up and say, "I'm a Democrat, I vote no." And Aaron Friday, who's a Democrat, who has is has left that party. Um, because they, she, they tried to change her child, um, trans her child. They taught gender theory when her daughter was 11, um, five girls came and all said, and they secretly transitioned all these five young girls at 11, Aaron Friday found out they had been keeping a secret. And, um, then she awakened to all this nonsense and, um, her daughter, you know, hated her for a while and um, but she held her ground and um, her daughter is grateful. There's a lot of people who, you know, we parents know what's best for their kids. It's insane to me that this, this state seems to believe that kids who can't drink, can't drive, can't vote. Are capable of deciding gender. Right. Um that's just mind blowing. Right. And it is literally that insane. Right. Like I'm not blowing any smoke here. It is literally that insane. They believe that kids know best on this issue, but they, they're not even responsible for their actions mm -hmm. up till you start to be at about 15, 16, but right. you know, they're talking about transitioning as little kids. Mm -hmm. This witness from uh, Chino Hills that's on the board, the 12 children that were, um, you know, wanting secrets kept from the parents, the 12 children that were notified of what was going on with their children, um, none of the parents kicked these kids out of the house, like the authors of the bill claim. They claim on the preface that, you know, your parents are going to abandon you. None of the parents abandoned the kids. So that does not happen. A parent provides counseling for a child that's gender confused. A parent. But I thought a parent was just supposed to be a friend of their kid and tell them, sure, you do whatever you want. Yeah. You want to know how many times my my parents called me out on my blah, 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 when I was a kid and I thought I knew best. Um, no, no, no. Parents are to not be friends and to say, had you know, they talk about these. Um, struggle sessions in Marxism. It's a struggle section, you know, you know, you talk about these hard conversations, a hard conversation is for a parent to say, Hey, you know, I have more years of experience. My dad has had that conversation when I was a kid, you know, I've got this much experience. Listen to my advice. And, um, you know, I really, I really did and still do. When I'm making decisions, I call my parents. I run things by my elders. I don't just jump in and make decisions. It's sound wisdom. I don't know. Do you think it is? I think it is. Um, I think it's also insane that the state believes it knows better. That whole arrogance seems to be what a whole, at the state level is running California. They know better. They know how to control. They know how to control your money better than you do. They know mm -hmm. how to control your free speech better than you do. Mm -hmm. They believe that they know more about medical, your medical choices than you and your doctor. Mm -hmm. That's all about control in this state. They also have a bill that takes away the sovereignty of a school board. So they're like, "Up, oh, 
the state. Remember what Ronald Reagan said? You know, I'm the government and I'm here to help. That's mm-hmm. California. I'm the government and I'm here to help. Well, watch out. Because now they're taking away the sovereignty of boards to make decision for their school districts. So they they are they are like a totalitarian, a soft totalitarian government. That's like what we're under right now. Mm-hmm. And people just don't know it because it hasn't it's gotten bad, but it hasn't gotten that bad yet. Well, I want to point out that California has a net migration out of the state. And most of those people that are leaving are productive citizens that had jobs, that were taxpayers. My brother and wife from Sacramento are leaving. My brother. Everybody knows somebody that's leaving. My brother in law from the same area, Northern California, are leaving. So um, my stepdaughter is leaving. Her future in laws have land bought in Tennessee, are leaving. Many teacher friends that I know have left. But Gavin Newsom and the media, who is owned by whatever, will get on there and con you and say, we've got we've got an increase in our population. He No, that's simply not true. Well any independent organization is saying no. Right. We wouldn't have lost a congressional seat, even with how they've in, embraced every illegal alien that wants to come in and gave them free health care. We mm-hmm. still in California lost a congressional seat. Right. That's a big deal. And let me clarify. I love immigrants. I'm all for, for uh, lawful immigration. I am against doing it the incorrect way. Um, And as a teacher, anytime I had a child in my class, I embraced and just loved on them and taught them to read, write and do math. So, but lawful and free health care. I just got a bill from the emergency room that was $2,200. I do not have $2,200. I was distraught. When you're giving free health care to everybody, they charged me $50 for one Tylenol. Yeah. And when I have to pay that bill, and then it's free or sex changes to someone in this prison is paid for by my tax dollars. You know, it's just very upsetting. It is. It is. I want to be a light and I'm not sounding like a light right now, but you got to call out the dark. You got to shine the light in the darkness to get like to the solutions. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But, you know, there are some places where there's hope. Like you mentioned, people have had lawsuits. The problem is if you have to go the path of lawsuits, it takes time it takes minimum two years Mm -hmm. could be four or five Mm -hmm. before you get any resolution on an issue and so i think the more expedient way is changing local who you vote for whether you're in california or or anywhere else right who you vote for makes a real difference right now i think it makes even more difference at the city council level the school board level and the board of supervisors level than it does at at the congressional level. But all of them matter. Don't just believe what politicians say. Do your research. We need to be involved. We need to be civically engaged. And that has largely been forgotten. And that's why I'm here. That's, that is exactly why I'm here because, um, There's three types of people, those who do something, those who support those who do something and those who do nothing. And if ever there was a time to do something, the time is now. Absolutely. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and go to break. Okay. This is Eric Rollins, the Constitutionalist here on 1550 KXCX, the best talk in town. I want to say thank you to everybody that watches on social media. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. And, you know, if you really like the show, sign up for our notifications. It's a privilege to do this. And so if I'm doing something right, doing something wrong, let me know. Talk to me. Let's go ahead and come back. This is Eric Rollins, the Constitutionalist here on 1550 KXCX, the best talk in town. I am joined by Tammy McMahon Gorens, and we are talking about the state of education, kind of the state of the state here in California. I see this state as as having the best weather, great people, Mm -hmm. 
tremendous natural resources. And we've had people in charge that have done their best through good intentions, because I do believe they have good intentions, but bad policy. Mm -hmm. They've shackled the state. Okay. The best, if you look at surveys of what's happening in an education in California, the best you're going to see us is in the 30s. You know, the 30th state. Well, we're the number fifth largest economy in the world, but we're the 30th worst state in the United States or worse. A whole bunch of those surveys, if you get into reading and math, put us at 48th, 49th, and 50th. We're pretty much at the bottom of the barrel. Right. But there are some surveys, some places you can find us a little higher, but we're still well below where we do our best. We're still well below half of the nation. Mm -hmm. If we don't fix this, our future goes away. That's why this is so critically important. You know, it's not just a cliche to say, well, our youth is our future. Well, if they're not educated, if they're not civically engaged, they don't learn to be civically engaged. If they're not patriots, Mm -hmm. we got a problem coming up. Yes, I believe that um, we need to teach our children to read, write. We need to teach virtues. I belong to Freedom in Education, and I am an ambassador to whatever school I am working at at the time. And my favorite school district is Lemoore Unified. So, um, and we offer solutions and shed light on and, and offer teachers. Um, they can they can join on in freedom and education. And we give free book bundles to teachers and offer help. So I believe in being a light in a dark world. and. Um, That's why I'm here. So I went to a teacher freedom summit in Denver, Colorado, and I can um, offer a free ride to anybody next summer. Last couple weeks in July, we don't have exact dates. Dr. Carol Swain was the keynote speaker. Now, Carol Swain is an impressive woman. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell us just a little bit about her. She's moved into education, but she started from nothing. So Dr. Carol Swain is a college professor who came from poverty and nothing. She was a mother at 16 or 17. She told her story at the Freedom in Education Summit. I was in tears. Um, She is a beautiful woman who was a lifelong Democrat loyal woman. She became a Christian later in her life. So she tell, sh- shared that story. And um, she went to um, the conservative side because she saw that the Democrat Party was not really for the people. And so she believed that she was being lied to. And um, she was offering hope to all of these teachers hundreds of teachers from all over the United States that were at this freedom summit. So give me an example. You said she's offering hope. Yes. What, what, what was it? Where, how did she offer hope? Well, she said that, um, she said that, um, she talked about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And she said that, um, she, People don't like to hear her story because she's a story that of living the American dream. So she pulled herself up by the bootstraps. Which, ah, which, you can't say that if you're white. Well, um, I've you heard can't. her. I've heard her say that, and she's not white. Yeah. Well, then she's a, a supporting white supremacy values. So, anyway, um, let me get like go down that rabbit hole. But she said. And this is what I say to all my students. I tell them, you, you, you get your education, you learn how to read, you excel in school. And that's what she did. She had people that encouraged her and she took a hold of it and she got this degree and then she got this degree and then she got her master's and then she got her doctorate. Then she taught at college for years. And so she is a shining example that if you believe it, you can achieve it. Well, it takes a little more than belief. We have a lot of people that just believe it should be handed to them. Footwork. Footwork. Right. 
there's a whole lot of hard work that goes behind the, the story of every successful person. Right. And we tend to forget that. And, right. And, you know, if things are handed to people, if you get a participation trophy and you didn't have to earn it. Right. Um, then you expect the next thing to just be handed to you. Right. That's the problem with the participation trophy. Right. I'm not trying to tear some kid down. I'm, I'm trying to say that competition – that meritocracy that is so very American is what essentially can make or break you. And right. hopefully it makes you. Um, we're not all going to win. Look, I was always a mediocre athlete. Mm -hmm. I was always the guy that tried the hardest. And thus, I'm an okay athlete, but it forced me mm -hmm. to do my best. So a lot of people in um, education, and you hear this buzzword, I hear it when I'm um, teaching um, equity, 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 they're pushing this word, but equity means equal outcomes. So equal outcomes means everybody graduates, everybody gets a trophy. But if you graduate and you can't read, what good is that to you? Um, it just got them out of the system so that they could move on to the next person. That's all it did. It didn't help that kid whatsoever. Right. Right. And, and equality from the 1964 e equality act is different than equity. Equality means everybody should be treated the same, not based on, you know, the color of their skin or their disability or anything like that. So equity, although people in education think it's a good word, I cringe when I hear it because it is not a good word. What people have to realize is all of us have different gifts. If you have two kids, they're not going to have the same gifts. But they're right. Not. So if you have two kids and they have different gifts, one might be great at math and one might be great in art. And if, if there's a third kid, they might be great at something else. The idea that they're all supposed to end up in the same place, which is equi equity, right, is insane right. because you have to basically stomp on their gifts mm -hmm. to make all of those kids equal out. Like, I don't know, there's government systems that they're all about making everything equal, except for the ruling elite who know better and, and are supposed to rule us. Right. Doesn't matter which system or what name you want to give that. Right. I just want to let everybody know that we're fighting against um, saving America and saving our kids by leave our kids alone. I want to, I want to do that old rock song. We don't need no, I mean, leave our kids alone. Bam. Ba bam. I mean, cause that is where we're at. Leave our kids stinking. Is that Pink Floyd? Oh yes. I'm like, let's get back to it. Rock out, man. Leave our kids alone. We are in a fight between a meritocracy, American values, our constitution, Leave our kids alone and communism. And if you don't see it, it's going to happen in full force within the next 10 years. Doesn't matter whether they're actually communist. It matters that one side sees freedom and the other side wants state control making yeah. decisions. And so the, the left talks about freedom in nice ways, but how much freedom did they allow during COVID? They, they stomped on kids, right? Right. And they, they told stomped on, on you. yeah. And they I had someone on chase me down in Costco all the way to the meat counter. Get your mask on. You know, I wanted to be free. So there's one side that is for your constitutional freedoms. Just look, open your eyes. This is not right against la left, Democrat against Republican. There is a populist movement. That just wants America to be free. So vote for your freedoms or we're, we're done. We are, we're done. We inspire the world. We are the beacon for the world for freedom. The important thing is because we're that beacon, mm -hmm. we have to stand resolute. But, you know, you Sorry. see some examples around the world in Canada, the truckers stood against vaccine mandates. Yep. Or more recently, if you look at the elections all over Europe, center-right nationalist 
populist. So not we're not mm-hmm. talking hardcore conservatives. They're generally nationalist populists, much like Trump. Look, I'm much more conservative than Trump. I love his policies, but I'm more conservative than he is. And I'm eagerly going to vote for Trump. But all over Europe, mm-hmm. they're voting for nationalist populists. It looks like the European Union and its very liberal rulers are mm-hmm. about to have their world shaken up. Right. Just like here in, in the United States, I believe that we're having a big shift. It's California, unfortunately, we're slow learners anymore. We're a little behind the curve. Right. But I believe that the country is changing. Right. For solutions, look up Erin Friday and follow her and CaliforniaPolicyCenter.org. If you subscribe to them, your eyes will be open because they will report to you everything that's going on, every lawsuit that's being won, and you can follow, you can pray, get involved in local politics, come to the California Republican Assembly, come to our constitutionalist group in Clovis or Kingsburg, get involved in the GOP, no matter what, you can insult, you can say, oh, they're fighting or oh, they're the, no, get involved because you can be the change and enough of us get involved. We can be the change in the light. So I don't want to hear your grumbling or you, you know, they're divided or they argue. No, uh-uh. get involved because we are the change. Be the change. Stop complaining. Get involved. Well, there's was that too harsh? No, no. Some people need to hear that. Okay. You know, we live a pretty good life. We're kind of spoiled here. We are. And so the people I drive that are a big most, truck. The people that are most appreciative of their freedoms. Right. Seem to be first generation Americans that came the right way. Right. They're more patriotic. They're thrilled that they can do something that in a lot of countries around the world you can't do, which is define your own des- destiny to use your skills, your innate skills. Right. And your hard work. Yep. And maybe a little bit of luck, but mostly it's your skills, your hard work, your sweat. Get her done. And they can do whatever they want. Yeah. So at this seminar where you got to meet Carol Swain, and I'm a little jealous. Yeah, um, I got a picture with her. What What can you share about it? I, I know some of it was private, but there were a bunch of people that are dedicated to changing what's had, ha- happening in education. Can you talk about some general themes? I know you can't let out the strategy, but some general themes. Well, one, one two of the pullout sessions that I went to, <clears throat> one was Freedom in Education, which is the group that I belong to. So I wanted to go to that. And uh, that was awesome. Teachers got plugged into what that's about. And teachers, I encourage you to join on and contact me. Um, and also, um, one class was on communism. And I'm like, I'm taking that class. Because what is going on? When you look at all the signs of the times, and I took copious notes, all the signs of the times when they come in and they want to control the kids and they want to, you know, do all these things when they, there's government overreach like Sacramento um, and and things like that. That's communism. When when Kamala says um, two days ago, she goes, we want to do gun control like Australia. Mm-hmm. I want to let you know. They took Australia's guns. When Kamala tells you who she is, listen to her because they want to take, they want to take your right. But I'm telling you, the people like that kid who tried to kill Trump, um, they'll have the, they'll get their guns and the law abiding citizens will turn theirs in. Well, he got all of those things he needed legally, except he stole his parent, his father's AR-15. Right. He stole it. Okay, I, did, I didn't know did those Did you not details. know that? Yeah, no. he stole it. No, so, so he didn't the, get that gun legally. Yeah, the criminals will have guns and you will not have the right to defend yourself. So that's that. That's where we're at. I didn't, I didn't plan on talking about gun control. It's education, but it all ties in. But at this conference, there were some many, many brave teachers who... Um, they had all these books that are donated by gender nation 
that um, have all sorts of sexual content that people don't know. I just had a book this year that a student had that was at a 4.2 grade point level that was about a butcher that killed his wife because he got angry at her and put her in a meat grinder. And it's at a fourth grade, second month grade point level. Yikes. Yeah. So there's books that are out there with sexual content that, and so there was a teacher who was so brave. She was at a board meeting and there was these people that were on the other side, like, we don't believe in book banning. Don't ban books, you know, and we're not well, saying what about age appropriate. Right. Right. So this teacher who was real brave and she was up on the stage at this conference, she went and she showed this person. She goes, just look at this book. Do you want your kids to have this book? And the person opened the book that was previously speaking about, I'm not a book banner because they're, they're taught to parrot things. Mm -hmm. And so she looked at that book and was horrified. Like, no, that's not appropriate for children. So there are a bunch of brave teachers that are just bravely saying, hey, you know. So can we fix the system or do people just need to get out and homeschool? I think we ultimately have to fix the system, but homeschooling puts pressure. The more there is a diversity of options, the more it's more like the marketplace is working. Right. And so it puts pressure on education to not be so crazy. I've grown in my uh, political walk over time. So at first I went through the stage where pull everybody out, homeschool, not everybody's able to do that. So I am for promoting homeschool. I am for promoting school choice and I am for praying diligently and supporting teachers in the public school system who are under a lot of pressure to be God and everything to the students. And I am for uh, supporting teachers in the public school system who don't want to be activists, just want to teach reading, writing, and math. And they need lots of prayer, lots of support. And I'm for all of that. So I, I'm for- So you have an all of the above approach. That yes. It's all hands on deck. All hands on deck. Pull your kids out if you can. Um uh, give uh, I'm all for charter schools and all alternatives and free choices. I'm for freedom and I'm for teacher freedom. Take the stuff off their plate, get off their backs and let them teach. A lot of good teachers. I don't know any activists in my world. Well, um, a lot of people are going to say, well, no, it's not really communism. If it's authoritarian control, I don't, I don't know that we have to call it communism. Does it matter if they want the state to control the means of production and make all choices about your life and mm -hmm. about your kids? Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand that is if you technically communism, but if they want to rebrand it, who cares? It's, it's freedom versus control. Yeah. Just think common sense. Like I, I am really down for, I taught second grade. So keep it simple. So just think common sense. So when um, uh, the four years of 2017 to 2021, um, you were free, your gas was cheap, your groceries were cheap, and your life was good. And my cousin's a farmer in Kansas, and he said those were the four years that he was not in the hole. All the years before that, he was always in the hole. Those are the four years he was not in the hole. And then just think about the last few years. Your gas is high. It is more than 12% interest inflation. I'm sorry. When I go to the grocery store, there's things that are 40 and 50% mm -hmm. more expensive. Just think with your common sense, you guys. Vote for your freedom. That's it. We're going to go ahead and take our last break. Okay. This is Eric Rollins, the Constitutionalist, here on 1550 KXCX, the best talk in town. As you know, I always try to be hopeful and offer solutions with this last segment. So anything okay. we can do to move people to action and to inspire them. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and come back. This is Eric Rollins, the constitutionalist here on 1550 KXCX, the best talk in town. I'm talking about the state of education here in California, which it's a pretty sorry state, but I do believe that there is some hope. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe that it could be changed. I am joined by Tammy McMahon Gorens, and she's also a warrior in this battle. It's not enough to make our voices heard. We need to act. 
yes, the first step is to talk to people. Mm -hmm. But when you look at things like it's not acceptable on college campuses to have anything but the woke orthodox opinion, well, there's a group standing against that called Turning Point. And they're growing like mad in California because the students, let's face it, particularly college-age students, they don't like being told what to do. Mm -mm. Well, the woke want to tell them what to think, how to think. And if you dare cross any line, you know, if you dare be the black sheep in the family rather than just one of the sheep that follows along, they dox you. They cancel you. Mm -hmm. They make your life tough. Well... Now you've got a more organized group. It makes it easier to stand for freedom and to not put up with that nonsense. Yep. They're a big movement. Mm -hmm. And that's very exciting to see our youth getting involved. I would also like you to go with to um, a website called standwithmark.org. Standwithmark.org. I've go never there. looked at this one. Standwithmark.org. Just check it out. It's Mark Janis. He won the 2019 Supreme Court decision um, where uh, you're not required to be in the union and you have the freedom to choose. So just check it out. Well, the reason that matters is because I'm not saying the average union member. I'm saying if you look at the California Teachers Union, they give more than 95 percent of all their political donations to one party. You think there might be a problem there? There's no balance. Well, and I, I have very, I have beautiful, beautiful friends that are negotiators in the union at the, and I, I, mm. I, I, I love them and they're, um, they're negotiating at the local level and I support them and they're beautiful people. So, but the majority of the money, if 120 comes out, the hundred dollars, 20 might go to local. The hundred that comes out is for the very restorative justice that teachers are against that you kid, you send Johnny to the, he cusses you out. You send him to the office and he comes back and there's no consequence. So he knows he can keep cussing you out. Mm -hmm. So, or they throw chairs and um, there's no consequences and that's restorative justice. So uh, well, there's no consequences based on the color of their skin. Well, sometimes. Yeah. That, that, that's just wrong. I think that everybody should have equal opportunity. And I know we, we sometimes fail with that, but you want equal opportunity. Right, right. And so then kid, there should be consequences. Right, and, there's positive and negative consequences and, kid, and, and your classroom needs to be a safe place. And many teachers I know are very, very unhappy because uh, there's chaos and they're trying, you, you can't have chaos. You have to have an orderly class in order to teach. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, there's that, that website and um, join the teacher coalition and freedom and education and um, follow the, oh, where is it? CaliforniaPolicyCenter.org. Go there, follow them and get involved locally. There's Another one I'm going to add, I, I love do. Tracy Henderson and she has the parents union. California parents, parents union. So the idea that essentially she formed a union, but it's of the parents, mm -hmm. not of the teachers to represent parents' rights. Right. So she, she does that. So and we've got a ton of people involved mm -hmm. trying to change this, but we, they need more foot soldiers. They need more help. They need more finances. But those are all beacons of hope. Right. Right. So we need to get Tracy back on. Yes, I do need to get Tracy Find back on. Find out what's going on with her. So this is what's really cool, too. And in, in conclusion, I lost some friends in 2020 when I took a stand for what was right to me. And which is sad because they all gave their opinions for years. And I was like, oh, they don't like the person I like, you know. But then when I gave my opinion, they blocked me. So, but in this joining up of this freedom movement, I have met more friends that are just amazing. When I was in that educational room, I had people tapping me on the shoulder. Tammy, hi. 
Tammy, hi. Tammy, people I knew from all over the state just because I joined this movement. So come, please join us. Be brave. Don't be afraid to say, you can tell the truth in love. So you're not alone. I am not alone. There is a host of us. I was so joyous that day. I've got goosebumps on my arms just talking about it. There is a, when you stand on the, when you stand on the side of right, how odd to say that. When you stand on the side of what's right, hmm, the right, and you stand for protecting our children, and you stand on principles and virtues, you sleep well at the end of the day, and you know that it's all okay. Even if people don't like you, um, you shine. You shine bright because you're for what's right. And if you're for protecting kids, you're on the right side. There is no doubt about Bam, that. Bam. There you go. <laughs> Get her done. I remember I was one of the first people during COVID mm-hmm. that was out on Blackstone and Shaw. So that's that's a major cross street in Fresno. Yeah. With a sign. But I was almost alone. So people looked at us like we were crazy. Yeah. And I realized that wasn't going to make a difference. The first person, yes, they show bravery. Yeah. When there's two, it's a little better. But as soon as you find your group, you become powerful. Mm-hmm. There are all kinds of opportunities, whether we're talking about the California Republican Assembly, we're talking about the RNHA, Republican National Hispanic Assembly, Constitutionalists for California. I'm probably missing somebody. Or your local GOP, which isn't perfect, but you know what? They're if, awesome. Great if people. you're not there to help them, yeah, you're not doing your part. If you don't like what's happening with the local GOP, why don't you come to a meeting and try to fix it? Right. And I want to end with this visual. Okay. There's this card table and there's all these elitists that are around it, like the people in Sacramento and they're all around it and they're smoking and they're drinking and they're in control. And there's all these people under the table that are holding the card table up and they're bent over. And so that's you. That's me. That's Aaron Friday. That's the Freedom Angels. That's the Constitutionalist. It's the local GOP. It's the California Republican Assembly. It's people that just come to meetings. It's people that are involved. It's Sean, who we lost and honor, uh, who's now up in heaven over that. But if we all stand up, that card table falls and those elitists don't have power over us anymore. So get stinking involved. Amen. There you go. That was like a sermon. Amen. Wow. This is fun because I get more comfortable the more times I'm on this stuff. (laughs) We're down to just about a minute. (laughs) Okay. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Shoot, I just said it. (laughs) I just said it, baby. Get involved. Get involved. And another thing, too, is talk to your neighbor. Talk to your gardener. Talk to your talk quietly to people. And, um, you know, I was in big lots one time and they were still in a big pool. Um, And the people at the cashier were um, were upset. Like, we don't know why this is going. And I said, it's going because of the policies. You got to vote different. Mm -hmm. Every time I have a waitress, I give her a huge cash tip. And I say, if you vote for someone in particular, you're not going to be taxed on your tips. I support you. Um, Whatever. Just get involved. Start talking. Well, speaking out, making your voice heard is the first step. Pray. Pray every day because we need help. Well, that that brings balance to your life, tends to make you more thankful. Yeah. And gives you a set of guidelines that I think if everybody would follow those guidelines, we'd have a better life. I prayed all the way over here this morning. I we, mean, people- Folks, think- we prayed before we started. Yeah, we did, didn't we? We're going to wrap it on that <laughs> okay. note. I thank you for this time, Tammy. Thank you, Eric. This is Eric Rollins, the Constitutionalist here on 1550 KXEX, the best talk in town. You are my brother. Thank you, Eric.